Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darwin and in today's video, I wanted to do a discussion video on the meta in World of Warcraft and whether you should be chasing it or shouldn't. Regularly on streams and even in videos, I get players coming to me asking me, hey, I am playing, let's say Rogue for example, and Subtlety is considered the best rating spec in the game right now, but I don't enjoy it. I'm not having a lot of fun with it. There are some mechanics I don't like. Am I really going to be at that big of a disadvantage if I could play Outlaw or even Assassination in raids? Or am I just kind of stuck playing Subtlety? So I thought this would be an awesome topic to make a video on. A longer discussion video potentially, but this is a really cool idea. And I thought I would want to give some constructive advice on whether you end up chasing the meta or whether you want to play a play style that you like. Some of my personal advice from my PvE experiences in terms of how to approach either decision that you make. I get these questions, in fact, quite often in terms of should you play on meta, should you play off meta, and what should you do if you don't play a meta spec? In my videos as well as the streams, I usually can be seen playing something that isn't considered popular as a spec, something a little off-brand. Arcane Mages before patch 9.1, because right now they're really popular. But prior to this, no one really played them. Frost DKs, Outlaw Rogue, whether it's good or not. Demonology Warlocks, before they got good. Survival Hunters, Feral Druids, you name it. I've always just found myself enjoying certain playstyles just because there was something unique to them. Back in MOP, I started playing Combat Rogue for PvP, because I thought 8 second Kidney Shot, Killing Spree, Red Buff, which gave you 30% more damage, Shadow Blades, which gave you Shadow Damage, but combined together, there's no way that can't work in PvP. And I was lucky to even hit 2k on my combat rogue because it was not the play for PvP. Then Watt rolled around and it actually flipped. It went from the worst PvP spec to the best rogue spec. Even though Watt was not my most fondest expansion, I did enjoy playing some combat rogue back then. The Legion came around where they replaced combat with Outlaw and I actually quite liked Outlaw. There were mechanics that I remember people didn't like, like Roll of the Bones, for example, the RNG aspect of it. But I kind of liked the variance of gameplay between the eyes, the pistol shot, the grapple hook. I don't really remember how good Outlaw Rogue was in Legion, but I don't remember it being as popular as Affliction Warlocks. Look at some of the logs from older raids, because I didn't really raid Mythic back in uh, Legion. I barely even got heroic bosses killed for that matter. But look at some of the logs, it doesn't seem like it was completely dumpster tier, but also it was nowhere near as popular as Affliction Warlocks were. But it wasn't popular in Mythic Pluses, it wasn't really popular in PvP, except for that one short time where you put an Outlaw Rogue with a fewer word together into AWC and the burst that they had could just one-shot players. But besides it, I think Legion was not the best expansion. It wasn't completely trash tier spec, but it wasn't insanely good either. And then BFA rolled around where it was literally the king of mythic pluses to the point where people double stacked and even in some cases triple stack rogues for mythic plus runs. So I've played my favorite spec because I like the playstyle. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's not so good. And I kind of treat my alts in the same way. I mean, learning three different specs for every one of my alts would be very, very difficult and take a lot of my time. So I just kind of focus in on a playstyle that I like and just try to min max it as best as I can. So I've had the ability to play a spec that's a little off meta. And also I've had moments where that spec is the meta. It is the most popular build. So I'm actually kind of lucky that I've been on kind of the both sides of the coin while still playing the same exact spec that I enjoy playing. Let's take a back from the history lesson and talk about the meta. What is meta? I've heard different acronyms like most efficient tactic available. Most of us know it's like the most popular champion in League of Legends or something. But for WoW players, it might be like the strongest build for PvP, the strongest spec for raids, the strongest class for the current patch. And that's to me what meta is, playing the most efficient class or the one that's deemed the most efficient by the community, the ones that gets the most players or even the classes that are just stacked the most inside of raids. The two playstyles we're talking in this video is one where a player is chasing the meta, always trying to go for the best possible build and optimize, versus not chasing the meta, which would be the flip coin of playing whatever you like. Thinking about the two different playstyles, I decided to put a list of advantages and disadvantages for both given playstyles. We'll first talk about the advantages of playing in the meta, which to start with are going to be the fact that you are playing something that is super well optimized, which gives you many benefits. Like if you are a huge numbers person, you like seeing big juicy numbers, big juicy crits, your class is probably seeing the best of them. 
you have the best parses, the best details meters for DPS. It's also a lot easier to get into random pug groups for any mythic plus or any raid if you are the class that makes PvE content easier, which is the raw damage output or with how safe everybody feels around you when you heal them or with how very, very little damage you take whenever you are the tank of that group. Of course, you're going to get taken into those groups, even if that character is a little bit undergeared. Same thing happened to Avengers Demon Thunders for the season one of Shadowlands. And also, you are playing the most efficient class in the game. For some people, that is the biggest reward. You're playing the most optimal, the best thing in the world. And some players just simply enjoy the idea of highly optimizing their gameplay to the nth degree. So when you're playing literally the Chad incarnate of classes, what disadvantages could this have at all? And the ones I put together is, well, depending on the patches, depending on the balance tuning, you might actually have to switch classes. Classes and balance tuning, like I told you in my history lesson of what happened to me as a rogue, that changes regularly. Some patches, certain classes are stronger. Another patch change hits, gear gets added, tier sets change, all of a sudden, you're not the top tier anymore. So if you're someone who is chasing the meta, there's a good chance you'll have to switch classes. Switching classes means you have to play catch up. Gear, Legendaries, Covenants, and Renown for Shadowlands. That's quite a lot of time investment that you need to do if you do want to play the best. And we even saw this in Shadowlands. Patch 9.0 versus 9.05 turned Assassination Rogues from kind of like a meme spec that not a lot of people played to the best boss damage spec in the game. So if you were playing, let's say, Unholy Death Knight at the time, and you wanted to be the best boss killer, you would have had to completely drop your class to switch to something that was quickly on the rise. If you're constantly switching classes, then you're probably having to take a little bit longer learning some of the basics and even advanced concepts of classes compared to somebody who's been playing that class for a long while. They have a massive advantage if they've had five years worth of Assassination Rogue and you're just picking it up now in order to be able to reach the amount of level optimization that you're looking forward to. And also, no one said that these classes can be even fun. I've personally had some friends that swapped to different classes because they were looking like flavor of the month because their numbers looked really, really good, or they were trending upwards, even if the players didn't really enjoy the class. They could just stop playing it altogether, but they played it because it was getting the numbers that they wanted. In my experience, it's a lot harder to learn a thing when you don't really like doing the thing. It's a lot easier to learn new skills when you have fun with the new skills, and same thing can be said about classes. Now let's talk a bit about the flip side of things. You're not chasing the meta. You just pick the spec, pick the playstyle that you like, and just play it because you enjoy it. The advantages and disadvantages also are going to be somewhat obvious. The advantage is going to be, well, you're playing a class that you like. That's a pretty big one. Whether it's a frost mage, whether it's a survival hunter, whether it's an assassination rogue, you're playing a playstyle you enjoy, so you probably invest more time into it. Since you're playing the class a lot, then you're probably pretty good at it. There's a good chance that just after hours and hours invested into that class, not in all cases, but because you're spending so much time playing that one class that you really, really like, you will naturally get good at it. You'll have better mechanical skill when it comes to your basic rotation, better movement, better judgment of when to use cooldowns or not. And all that stuff comes naturally just from the hours you spend playing that class. Since the meta kind of ebbs and flows, sometimes classes are good, sometimes they're not, based on balance tunings and scaling with gear, certain classes eventually will have their time in the spotlight. And since you played, let's say, Frost Mage for so long, when it becomes the meta class, now you have a massive advantage. You can take advantage of the fact that you know the class really well. Now is your time to shine. You have a great understanding of it. Now it's time to use that understanding to reap the reward. Now you're the guy getting invited to all the keys, all the raids, and are carrying everybody in DPS. It can be a fantastic feeling. But with the pros, you have the cons. And like the pros, the cons of playing whatever you like can also be obvious for example when you are top tier it's fantastic when you're not you're not ebb and flow you're playing a play cell that you enjoy but sometimes your spec is the most wanted and other times it isn't at the top of everyone's list based on balance tunings and class changes sometimes you're really good sometimes you're not and that inconsistency for some players where you're pressing exactly the same buttons as before but now you're just doing those damage sometimes isn't all that fun when your spec is in the downtrend, it might be harder for you to find pug groups. If you're doing just random LFG groups, for keys, or raids, you might not be the first spec or class that people consider. So when you take a look at two different playstyles that you have in front of you, honestly, my best advice is just do what you want. 
that would be the simplest, easiest answer. Play what you like. You want to chase the meta, you want to play flavor of the month, you should. Some players really get a lot of joy out of being able to recreate their character and try to maximize it and optimize it. And other players, if you want to play that spec playstyle and are feeling like you're pressured to play something else, you should just stick to your guns and play whatever you like. It really doesn't matter in the long run. I guess it all depends on what kind of content you're engaging in, like you're trying to go for the top end or rank one or just trying to play the game casually. But honestly, the short answer would be just do you. Do whatever you want to do. The long answer is a little bit more complicated. There are two different play styles that you have, both with advantages and disadvantages, but there are also some of the things that I think you should consider. For example, I think it's really worth talking about how you engage with World of Warcraft. Do you pug or are you looking for like a, a real guild, a real raid group? Pugging is an interesting thing because the meta ends up trickling from the top end of top tier players all the way down to the pug world whether it is your regular weekly 15 keys that you do, or maybe even 10s. Hell, the meta can trickle even down to 5s. And the meta can also get a little bit twisted, especially when you're dealing with random players. For example, if everybody sees Retribution Paladins brought to raids and Mythic Pluses at the top end, or maybe you see Red Pallies in the MDI, for example, all of a sudden players are going to want to expect for them to get triple Red Pallies in order to get their plus 5 key done. Do you need red pallies? No. We have logs that show that every single class, spec, and covenant combo in Shadowlands can get 15's keys done, no matter the affix, no matter the weak, tyrannical or fortified. But the medic and sometimes get twisted where players feel like they need the best of the best in order to accomplish some of the more casual content. With the LFG system we have currently, the person making the group really has the world as their platter. And why wouldn't they take the lobster over sardine? To them, is just a bunch of different classes, different specs, different covenants, different item levels. Nobody really considers like the personal play of that player. Even if you were someone who might, let's say, play an off-brand spec and you're really, really good at it, most players don't consider it. They're just trying to find the group that's going to be the safest, the easiest to get their key done. It's just kind of how the way things ended up being. I personally find it silly when players are looking for the best race class spec combination when they're just trying to hit 1200 in arenas for 2v2s, but some people believe that they need to play the very, very best that they can in order to gain the most amount of gain. Even though majority of racials, for the most part, at least in PvE, offer about like a 1 to 1.5% DPS gain at most, where a good swath of that DPS performance can be improved just from the way that you play your class. It's true when we play different classes, we press the same buttons, but some players just have that finesse. They know exactly when to press the right buttons, they know exactly when to hold certain buttons, when to unleash the full might of their burst. So there is quite a bit of nuance that a player may learn that's going to have the most amount of gain in terms of their DPS performance, then just swap into a racial for a 1% gain. And that's something you won't really, I think, be able to truly experience just play in the game in the park world. If you're someone who is in a position like we talked earlier where you're stuck feeling pressure to play a certain spec when you would rather play something else that's more fun for you, I really do think investing into an actual progression guild for PvE or PvP content might be a good step forward. Learning for with other players that are also eager to learn, players that are on a similar skill level as you, is probably one of the best environments you can have in order to foster better understanding and improvement of whatever class and spec that you play. Whether it's a heroic guild, a 3 out of 10 mythic, or a 10 out of 10 mythic guild, any environment, casual or hardcore, that's all about progression oriented, I think is a great place for any player that's looking to improve to be in. It does take a little bit more time than just, you know, pugging, opening up LFG and then joining whatever first group that you see. But it will allow you to connect with players that are like-minded that will actually be able to see the player and the performance and experience of the player rather than just for the spec, the covenant, the class, the item level that you may run. Honestly, it literally doesn't matter. I think the only time it matters whether you play the meta or whether you don't play the meta is if you're Echo going for yet another world first. But for most of you, if you are someone who likes to play the meta, you should. If you like swapping around classes because you love optimization, you totally should. Or if you're someone who does want to play a certain playstyle that you enjoy because you like it, honestly, you should foster it. But really do consider maybe looking for a guild, not a cesspool social guild. Those things don't really ever work out. 
you really should look for like a raiding guild with other players on a similar skill level other players looking to improve because i feel like playing with other players that are goal oriented is a much better experience than literally randoms because for randoms it's really just a whole nother game so that would be my advice no matter which player you are and it's really up to you in the end to decide whether you want to chase one or the other because two play styles are honestly viable you can play however you want to in the end it really doesn't matter whether you play the best of the best the worst of the worst in my opinion losing some percent in dps performance because something is more fun is personally to me more enjoyable for other players losing even one percent dps is not worth it and they would rather just reroll completely but this would be my advice whether you want to play chasing the meta or whether you just want to play a spec or class that you like so seriously play whatever you want to it literally doesn't matter thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys got any questions comments you can always leave them down in the comment section below or hit me up on discord i hang out on discord all the time always there to chat with people thank you all so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see all of you in the next one